In this short video, I'm going to show you how to answer a kind of question that you might get on the Greenbelt exam that involves the hand calculation of the simple regression coefficients. So the way the question might be phrased is as follows. Below is a table of data, and I'm going to show you the table of data now. Here it is. And for this kind of problem, the table of data always has the same kind of look. There's going to be the X and the Y data, and then there's going to be additional columns with things like the products of the X's and Y's, or the X's squared, and so on. And then at the bottom, there is going to be the sum of the columns above. It's this pattern of this data table that's a very good cue that this kind of problem is coming up. So what is the question? Well, below is a table of data showing the heights and weights of 15 people. Now the question usually just stops there, not even referencing the fact that in addition there are columns involving the squares of the heights and weights and the cross product. But I've put that into this question in, in parentheses, but don't be surprised if the data table is referred to without even mentioning the additional columns. So the question then asks, calculate the regression slope coefficient and the intercept for the regression of weights on heights. So I do want to point out that when something says the regression of weights on the heights, it means that the weights are the y value, the value you're trying to predict, and the heights are the x value. So when something says the regression of one thing on another, it's the first thing is the y and the second thing is the x. So what we're being asked to do is simply calculate the fitted slope coefficient beta hat and the fitted intercept alpha hat. So once again, here's the data table. It has the y and the x. They could be in a different order. It typically would have the observation number, although not always. And then it's going to have these additional columns involving the products of the x and y's and their squares. Then at the bottom of the table will be the sums of the columns. So the sums of the y's, the sums of the x's, and then the sums of the cross products and the squares. And this is very important because it's the fact that these columns are summed up that make this problem easy to do by hand and therefore the kind of problem that you might get on the Greenbelt exam. Now if you go into a typical statistics textbook into the chapter on simple regression, you'll generally see a formula for the slope coefficient like the one I have here. And what this formula is saying is that in the numerator, I take each value of y and I subtract the average of all of the y's. And then I take the corresponding value of x and I subtract the average of all of the x's. Then I multiply those two together and then add them up for all of the observations. That takes care of the numerator. In the denominator, what I do is I go through each value of the x's. So I start with the first x, and then I subtract the average of all of the x's. I square that, and then just add that up going down through all of the x's. So that's the standard formula for a regression coefficient. Now many books will also have a second formula. And this formula says that the regression slope coefficient can be computed by taking the x's and multiplying them by the y's and then adding them up. And from that sum, you then subtract the product of the average of all of the x's times the average of all of the y's times the sample size. That takes care of the numerator. Then in the denominator, what we do is we add up all of the squared values of the x's and from that subtract the average value of the x's squared times the sample size. Now once we have the regression slope coefficient, the formula for the intercept is easy. The intercept is just given by taking the average of the y's and then subtracting the fitted slope coefficient beta hat times the average of the x's and that gives us the alpha hat. Now this second form of the formula for the slope coefficient allows us to calculate the slope coefficient from the information in the table on the previous slide very, very easily. That table contained the sum of the products of the x's times the y's. 
It also contained the sum of the x sub i squareds, and then finally it had the sum of the x's and the sum of the y's, and also the sample size, and you can easily compute the average of the x's from their sum and the average of the y's from their sum. Once you have the beta hat, then calculating alpha only depends on the average of the x's and the average of the y's, and again, you can get those very easily from the sums that are provided in the table. So I'm now going to go ahead and work out the solution. And first I'm going to write down everything that we need. We are going to need the sum of the x sub i's. We are going to need the sum of the y sub i's. We are going to need the sum of the x sub i's squared. We'll need the sum of the x sub i's times the y sub i's. And then finally, we're going to need the sample size. So this means from this table, we're going to need the sum of the x sub i's right here, the sum of the y sub i's, the sum of the x sub i's squared, the sum of the x sub i's times the y sub i's, and then finally we're going to need the sample size. So I'll now fill in these numbers. The sum of the x sub i's is 1,013. The sum of the y sub i's is 2,258. The sum of the x sub i squared is 68,701. The sum of the x sub i's times the y sub i's is 154,209. And then finally, the sample size is 15. So before I begin using the formula for the regression coefficient, I should first compute the sample averages. So we need x bar, so that's going to be 1,013 divided by 15. And I can pull up the calculator. And so x bar is going to be 1, 0, 1, 3, divided by 15. So that's 67.53. Now I can compute y bar. So that's going to be 2,258. divided by 15, and so that's going to be 2258 divided by 15, which is 150.53. So now I'm ready to compute the regression coefficient. So beta hat is going to be equal to, and it of course is a ratio, and it begins with the sum of the xi, yi's, so 154, 209, and then I subtract from this uh, n which is 15, the sample size, and then I multiply that by the uh, x bar, and then finally I multiply that by the y bar. I'll extend my line here a little bit. <clears throat> 
So that's going to be the numerator. In the denominator, I put the sum of the x sub i squared. So that's going to be 68701. And then I subtract from that the n, 15, times the x bar squared. So that's going to be 67.53 all squared. So now I can pull up the calculator again. So um, I changed, incidentally, the calculator to being scientific by clicking on the view men menu. There's the way it's going to come up, and you can make it scientific as follows. And now I can plug this entire formula into this. So I'm going to open a parentheses, and then it's 154,209 minus 15 times 67.53 times 150.53. So that takes care of the numerator. So I'll close the parentheses. So now I'm going to go ahead and then divide by the denominator. So I hit the divide sign and then open parentheses. And then it's the 68701. minus the sample size times the x bar squared. So that's 67.53 and then square that. And we close the parentheses and then hit equals and you'll see that you get 5.83. So let me go ahead and write that down. So that's 5.83. So what this means is that for each additional inch of height, on average, the person is going to weigh 5.83 pounds more. So now we're going to go ahead and compute the intercept. So the intercept is going to be y bar minus the regression slope coefficient, 5.83, times x bar. So we're going to go 150.53 minus the regression slope coefficient, 5.83, times the x bar, which is 67.53, and hit equals. So the regression intercept, alpha hat, is minus 243.17. So this concludes the demonstration of how to compute the simple regression coefficients beta hat and alpha hat from a table that gives you not only the data points, the x and the y's, but the cross products, x sub i times y sub i summed up, and the uh, x sub i squareds as well. Now you can go ahead and stop this video here if all you're interested in is how to compute those. I'm going to continue for a bit and show you where the second formula for the regression slope coefficient comes from. So I've written down the formula for the regression coefficient and I'm going to begin by working on the numerator. So that's going to be the sum i equal 1 to n of y sub i minus y bar times x sub i minus x bar. And I'm going to begin by just simply multiplying these terms out. So to multiply these out, I'm going to get y sub i times x sub i. Then I'm going to get y sub i times x bar. 
then I'm going to get y bar times x sub i, and then y bar times x bar. So let me put that over here. So this is the sum from i equal 1 to n. And now it's going to be of the whole thing. So it's going to be y sub i times x sub i minus y sub i times x bar minus y bar times x sub i minus y bar times x bar. So again, it's just y sub i times x sub i plus y sub i times x bar. I said plus, but it's actually minus. And then I minus y bar times x sub i minus y bar times x bar, which makes this a plus. Now I'm just going to, to uh, distribute this summation uh, according to the various four terms here. So what this is, is going to be the sum from i equal 1 to n of y sub i times x sub i minus the sum from i equal 1 to n y sub i times x bar minus the sum from i equal 1 to n of y bar times x sub i plus the sum from i equal 1 to n of y bar x bar. Okay, so now anything with an i on it has to stay inside the summation, but anything that doesn't have an i on it is essentially a constant and can be factored out. So for example, in the second term, the x bar can be brought out in front. In the um, third term, the y bar can be brought out in front. And then this last term, I'm just summing the same number that happens to be x bar times y bar up n times. So it's going to be equal to n times that product. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So it's the sum i equals 1 to n of, and I'll change the order here to the customary order, x i, y i. And then this is going to be x bar times the sum i equals 1 to n of y sub i, factoring out the x bar. And then this is going to be minus y bar times the sum i equal 1 to n of x sub i. And then finally, plus n times x bar times y bar. As I say, this is just a constant term. If you add up a constant thing n times, you just get n times that. All right, now the next step is to say, okay, well, I can convert this sum of the y sub i's into an x bar just by dividing it by n. So I can, let me do that. This is going to be divided by n. But in order to not change anything, I have to multiply by n as well. And now I can change this uh, sum of the x sub i's into an x bar by dividing by n. But in order to not change anything, I have to multiply by n as well. And so I now have the following. First term stays the same. And then I get n x bar times y bar minus n y bar times x bar plus n x bar times y bar. So you can immediately see that these terms cancel out. And I'm left with things in the form that I need them, namely that that sum of the cross products that we started with up here is just going to be the sum from i equal 1 to n of the products of the x sub i times the y sub i minus now n times x bar and y bar. And so that means that we have in our equation here, we have the top part which is the sum of the 
xi's times the yi's minus now n times x bar y bar. So now we need to work on the denominator to complete the formula. So now I've wiped out what I've done before and I'll now work on the denominator. So what I'm working on here is the sum i equal 1 to n of x sub i minus x bar squared. And the strategy is pretty much the same. Uh, this time, instead of multiplying two terms together, I square this one out. So I get the first thing squared minus 2 times the product of the first and the second plus the second one squared. So that's going to be equal to and the sum here, i equals 1 to n. Now it's going to be the sum of the whole thing I get when I square it out. So that's going to be the first term squared minus 2 times the product of the two terms plus the second term squared. Now I distribute the summation here. So that's going to be, this is the sum from i equal 1 to n of x sub i squared, that's the first thing squared, minus the sum from i equal 1 to n of 2 x i x bar plus the sum from i equal 1 to n of x bar squared. And I can't do anything to change the first term, so it's going to just come along. So x sub i squared. Okay, now here the only thing with an i index on it here is the x sub i. So with respect to this summation, the 2 is a constant and the x bar is a constant. So I get minus 2x bar. I can just factor them out. Sum i equals 1 to n of x sub i. And then over here, there's no i on the x bar. It's just the average of all of the x's. So with respect to this summation, this uh, x bar squared is just a constant. And if I add a constant thing up n times, I get n times that constant. So this is going to be n x bar squared. Now I do exactly the same thing as I did before. I recognize that the sum of the x sub i's, if I divide them by an n, they become an x bar. But I better multiply by an n in order to keep everything the same so that those two n's cancel out. So now what I get is the first term just comes along. And now I get 2 n x bar times x bar. And of course, x bar times x bar is can be written as x bar squared. So let me just erase that. And then I have the n x bar squared from before. And now if I have minus 2 of these n x bar squared, and then I add 1 back in, I'm just left with 1. So my answer here is that this is the sum from i equal 1 to n of the x sub i's squared minus n x bar the quantity squared. So now I can put into the denominator what I just derived. So that's now the sum i equal 1 to n of the x sub i squared minus n x bar squared. All right, so that concludes this video showing you how to hand calculate the simple regression coefficients from the kind of table that you might see on the Greenbelt exam. And then I went a little bit further and uh, showed you where the second formula for the regression uh, coefficient comes from.